Greetings pilots, welcome back to the Imperial Academy, and in today's video I'm going to be teaching you about the TIE Interceptor of the Imperial Starfighter Corps. The TIE Interceptor was one of the many variants of fighter craft that the Empire utilised during its time in power, and like its TIE Brethren, was used extensively for hit and run assaults on capital ships and dogfighting against rebel starfighters, which it excelled at, no pun intended. The TIE Interceptor was fast, deadly and had lots of perks when it came to flying one of these killing machines out in space battles, and today you're going to learn what it takes to fly one, but with that feel free to like and subscribe if you enjoy Empire content or just Star Wars content in general, and maybe feel free to share this video with other like-minded Star Wars fans to show your allegiance to the Empire. But without further ado, let's get into it. The TIE Interceptor was built by Sienna Fleet Systems which the Empire commissioned as its flagship company for fighter and ship construction within the Imperial Navy and Starfighter Corps. The TIE Interceptor was created with the idea of it being a heavy hitting and fast dogfighter, able to keep up and outmaneuver its opponents, and as the name suggests, its job was to intercept and destroy rebel fighters in a swift and clean manner. This makes it stand out among its TIE counterparts, and is the go-to vehicle for many pilots in the Empire, mostly because a lot of them are considered suicidal, but Moving on, the Interceptor's solar ray design differs from the TIE Fighter as it is angled at the top and bottom, and is also lengthened forward to give the craft a dagger shape, which also increases its in-atmosphere manoeuvrability. Its cockpit remains the same as other TIE variants. All these elements combined made the Interceptor a small, nimble and hard to hit fighter, which rebels certainly struggled with during space battles, and especially capital ship gunners, who would have had a sure pain in the back trying to manoeuvre their guns to keep up with the Interceptor. In terms of firepower and weaponry, the Interceptor came equipped with four L-S9.3 laser cannons, which were installed in the four ends of the solar arrays as well as two chin-mounted twin laser cannons and warhead launchers, which allowed the Interceptor to output a flurry of powerful shots towards the enemy fighters, which had the potential to rip them to shreds. That being said, Interceptors have the potential to be upgraded to be on par if not better than the likes of A-Wings and X-Wings with shield generators, hyperdrives and more powerful and faster firing blasters. These upgrades though do turn the Interceptor more multi-purpose, but nonetheless it still retains its title as a fast, dogfighting craft that can easily outmaneuver others. In aspects such as the built-in SFST-S9A target and computer component reflects that, and definitely makes it stand out among its brethren in terms of its combat capabilities. The TIE Interceptor sports P-S5.6 twin ion engine, with the added advanced ion stream projector, which allows for intricate manoeuvres during combat scenarios, being able to swiftly outfly their opponents and keep up with rebel fighters, as well as the twin port deflectors, which allows for more sophisticated manipulation of the shield deflector all around the craft. This in turn makes the Interceptor far more refined than other TIEs, at allowing their pilots to have control. TIE Interceptors of course are known for their speed and manoeuvrability, being able to fly at roughly 1250km per hour and being able to outmaneuver most rebel starfighters with the wings being an exception, sometimes. This all comes together to create a fighter that is surely one of the Empire's go-to for space combat, and the pilots reflect this as some who survive are considered top guns which we will get into later. In terms of onboard equipment available to pilots, they have the usual navigation, ship tracking and targeting, engines and weaponry. They lack any sort of hyperdrive and life support, at least in the baseline variants that were not upgraded, so the tools the pilots have is very similar to other TIEs within the TIE Fighter family, so not all special in that regard. They have no landing gear, but can land on air rays if needed, which is generally not advisable, but nonetheless achievable. They are mostly relying on the ceiling racks of Star Destroyers and Station Hangers. With that being said, TIE Interceptors were relying on Star Destroyers and Stations in order to refuel and repair, which may have restricted their capabilities in terms of their flexibility out in battle, as they also rely on them for hyperspace travel, but nonetheless they are dangerous fighters to go against for rebels, so let's talk about the pilots that fly them. Pilots have to be very skilled and disciplined when it comes to flying these craft, they have to deal with many factors such as speed, shielding, maneuverability, oncoming fire, hull integrity and collision avoidance. Of course there are aspects to assist pilots during battles such as the onboard computer, friendly pilots, friendly capital ships, ship weaponry and features and flight suits. 
Pilots that utilise these to the full advantage have a better chance of surviving when it comes to using the TIE family of fighters, and being able to not underestimate the rebels at using their starfighters is definitely the right mindset for any Imperial pilot to have. Speaking of flight suits, the suits that Interceptor pilots wear is very much similar to other TIE pilots, as it consists of a suit with multiple layers of padding and reinforcement to protect him from the elements such as cold, heat, vacuum of space, blaster bolts and so on. The helmet is also reinforced and provides the wearer with vital elements such as oxygen and water to survive, especially out in space. It has two pipes running from the helmet to a life support pack in their chest, similar to AT-80 pilots. As well as that, the helmets have a built-in display and HUD showing diagnostics, wearer conditions, suit requirements, and they also enhance the wearer's vision letting them see in many different conditions that arise for them. Pilots typically wear formal attire when not flying, but instead resting or when going about their business in the ship or post they are assigned to. Although rest for Imperial pilots is not common during the Galactic Civil War, and those who survive more than a few battles are considered top guns within the Imperial Armada, whose skills and abilities out in the field are highly respected and looked up to by many other pilots, and not just those who fly interceptors. Speaking of interceptors, let's talk about strategies and tricks used by interceptor pilots. TIE interceptors, I'm sure as you're aware by now, are among the most manoeuvrable fighters within the TIE fighter family, and it's this manoeuvrability that allows them to achieve the upper hand over their opponents. It is important for pilots to remain on the tail end of enemies at all costs, but if someone gets behind them trying to shoot them down, well they can try jinking. With the interceptor's increased flight capabilities, pilots can move all over the place in many different directions to avoid oncoming fire from an enemy behind. Jinking could save a pilot's life if it is utilised effectively and when the time calls for it. The TIE Interceptor can also move fast. Its speed can allow pilots to catch up with enemies and keep them within a firing distance, which is effective for those looking to increase their kill count. This speed can allow interceptor pilots to trap their enemies by working with squadron mates into getting rebel starfighters to fly behind them and try to destroy their craft, while another pilot comes in and destroys that enemy. This utilises teamwork and good communication to turn the tide of a battle. Overall, a large factor when it comes to winning a starfighter battle or dogfight is teamwork. Teamwork allows pilots to work together and coordinate strategies to effectively take on rebels. Pilots that can communicate with each other have a better chance of surviving out in a battle. Teamwork will also get them very far in their pilot career. Having a good squadron can be a life changer as it means they can make some friends and bring glory to the Empire and its fleets at the same time. Overall, TIE Interceptor pilots are very skilled and being one will either bring triumph or turmoil for any rebel that faces you. So I will see you out amongst the stars, pilot.